Okay, starting at the real basics, hopefully at least you know how to turn your camera on. Uh, zooming in and out, obviously you just twist the barrel of the lens and you see the image get more zoomed in and more zoomed out. Uh, worth double checking if you've got an autofocus, manual focus switch on the side of your lens, good idea to make sure that's set to autofocus. Uh, if you've got a stabilizer, may as well turn that on. Different brands call it different things, could be optically stabilized, OS, VR, IS, all these different things. If you've got any switch on your lens for now, you may as well turn it on. Now I'm sure you're all aware, all shutter buttons work the same way, in that they're a two-stage button. You know, you can push them halfway down and they come to a natural stop, and that's when the camera is trying to find something to focus on. Zzz, beep, hopefully it does, but it won't actually take the picture until you press the button all the way down. So it's supposed to be that two-stage step. Don't just plunge it all the way and then wonder why it didn't get the photo. You know, half until it finds it, beep, and then press the button carefully. Now, when you're given a camera for the first time, I think the first thing we're always told is hold the camera really steady. And most people just think, yeah, I know all that kind of stuff. But actually, you'd be surprised. I took a photo of the word shake when I was designing these lecture slides, and it was late at night. It was a classic long, slow exposure, gonna have a lot of camera shake in there. And this was holding the camera as steady as I possibly could, but just doing a few basic techniques wrong, like holding the camera the wrong way, the way I see a lot of people hold cameras. And then this is taking the same photo again, but just doing a few basic things right, like hanging onto the camera correctly. So let's take a look at even how you're supposed to hang onto the thing. With your right hand, it's pretty obvious. There's a giant grip there. You can't go wrong. But with your left hand, you see all kinds of awkward things happening just because there is nowhere really obvious to, to hang onto it. And people end up just clasping the side of the camera often. And that just means you're pressing all these buttons here without meaning to. But the worst thing is you're not supporting the camera. Your left hand is supposed to be underneath the lens. In fact, the further out along the lens it is, if it's a big lens, the steadier the shot will be, rather than all the way back here, just clasping the side. So your left hand underneath the lens, supporting it. That also means you're able to recompose the shot, zoom in and out all the time. You don't have to kind of change it and then come back and hang on to it. And then that's all very awkward. You should pull your elbows in, that keeps it steady. So if you just hang onto a camera like that, it's able to wobble around wherever it wants to be. But if you pull your elbows in, you've just got a nice inbuilt rest and it just keeps it really steady. And if you're taking a vertical shot, you should actually have the grip on the top of the camera, not the bottom. Because if you have the grip on the bottom, then your other hand ends up tangled underneath here as well. And you can't get to any of these settings on the top and it's just kind of top heavy. It's just propped up there like that. But if you have your grip on the top, your other hand comes underneath. You can still put your elbow in your chest, keep it really steady, and you can get to all of your settings at once. Yeah, it means everyone can see you've got a sweaty underarm, but that's kind of the way it goes. Don't do these ones. Yeah, literally this is up the top, pulling it down, keep it really steady. And probably the most important tip is don't press the button too hard because it just shakes the camera at that critical moment when it's trying to take a picture. It should just be a case of gently squeezing it until it takes the shot. Obviously, one of the huge advantages of digital photography is that you can now look at the picture as soon as you've taken it and check that it worked out. And if it didn't, you can quickly change the settings and take the photo again before your subject's gone. Gone are the days where you come back from the chemist two weeks later and then you're flicking through your photos and then you're like, oh, I had the lens cap on or something. But sometimes you need to remind yourself to do that check. You know when you take a picture and it comes up for two seconds on the back? That's because you're supposed to look at it. It's worth your time just having a quick glance, seeing if it seems about the right brightness. Maybe zooming in digitally on the little magnifying glass, plus minus. Zoom in on the picture you've taken, go right in and check that the detail is still nice and sharp. If not, quick change your settings and take it again while you still can. So having taught this course a couple of times, there's a few things we've learnt that it's a good idea to try and catch early on. This might not be a problem for you, you might already have it set up, but it's still worth checking. So when you pick up your camera, Make sure that it's on P mode to start with, on your big mode dial, P for program. We'll just sort of use that as a stepping stone from here. It, it opens up some more options for us, but then we'll move on to using things like aperture mode and shutter speed mode. But for now, you've got to at least get off auto and go to P mode. You want to make sure you've got the right quality setting on your camera as well. Not much good taking low resolution or heavily compressed pictures. 
So go into your menu, find your quality, make sure you're on uh, large, fine quality JPEG or a RAW file if you're interested in doing that. Now the autofocus in your camera can actually work in one of two different ways. It can either just do a single focus, so AFS or one shot, and that's when it focuses, beep, find something. And as long as you keep your finger half pressed, if you move the camera around after that, it doesn't shift the focus. So it only focuses once. Or you can change your camera focusing mode to AI Servo, uh, which the other brands call AFC for continuous. And that's a tracking focus. So as long as you hold your finger down halfway on that shutter button, it's constantly updating the focus wherever you point the camera. Most of the time you want to be on one shot, AFS, the single focus. So you can carefully focus on something and then maybe recompose your shot a little bit before you press the button all the way down to get the shot. You've probably also noticed that a lot of cameras these days have a lot of autofocus points on them. These are all the different points that when you try and focus, these are all independently trying to find something, anything to focus on. And by default, all of these points are turned on. So they're all active which means you have absolutely no control over where the camera is going to focus. It'll just find the first thing that's brightest or it has the most contrast, and often it's not what you're interested in. Now in auto mode, all of those points are turned on and you can't do anything about that. That's one of the big problems of auto mode. You can't even tell it where to focus. But thankfully in all the camera modes we're going to be using on this course, uh, so that's P mode and anything better than that, you can choose exactly which point to use. And if you just set it to the center autofocus point, that's honestly the most useful point to set it on for 99% of your photography. And then it's very easy for you to accurately choose exactly what you want to focus on. To change which autofocus points you're using, uh, different brands, different things, but Canon has a little button on it there. You press that and then you can choose between your different points. Um, Nikon, in through the menu, autofocus area mode, and you can just go to single point. You can move that wherever you want. Also, if you've ever noticed as you're looking through your viewfinder, if everything just always looks a bit blurry, even the numbers and things down the bottom inside there, that's not your eyes or anything. You've just got to change this little diopter adjustment. It's like setting the right pair of glasses for you. If you bump this little diopter adjustment off, everything always looks a bit blurry. But not a bad idea to go outside and wake the camera up, press the button a little bit so there's some numbers and things displaying in there. Deliberately squiggle that thing way out of whack and it will all go blurry. And then just move it back and forth until it just becomes the easiest to see. And you might find that suddenly it's just so much more natural to look through. You don't need to force your eyes to focus on stuff anymore. So in summary, if you're about to start shooting, pick up your camera, check you're in program mode or something better. Uh, autofocus on, stabilizing on, check you're on the right quality, you know, high quality JPEG. Uh, your focus system, maybe have 